Introduction to Good Laboratory Practice Good Laboratory Practice is a quality system concerned with organizational process and the conditions under which non-clinical health and environmental safety studies are planned, performed, monitored, recorded, archived and reported. Good Laboratory Practice plays an important and crucial role in research and development. Good laboratory practices are anticipated to promote the quality and authority of test data. To achieve good laboratory practice, it is important to follow standard operating procedures. Now let's try to understand how chemicals and reagents are maintained for good laboratory practices. Purity means a substance is free from other with extraneous material typically expressed as percentage. Chemicals have an important effect in the accuracy of analysis. Chemicals of different grade like technical grade, laboratory or analytical reagent grade, primary standard grade and special purpose reagent or extra pure grade are used. When purity is not vital, technical grade chemicals are used. Routine laboratory use analytical grade chemicals to maintain primary standards. Special grade chemicals contain very low level of impurity and are used for specific purpose. All reagents and solutions in the laboratory area should be labeled to indicate identity, titer or concentration, storage requirement and expiry date. The following rules must be followed while handling reagents and chemicals. Use the chemical small packs of chemicals that would supply the desired quality and quantity. Replace the cap or stopper of the bottle immediately after using to prevent moisture absorption. Stoppers of the reagent bottle should be kept in clean, dry place and away from contaminated place. Always use fresh and clean spatula or pipettes. Always take out a slightly excess amount in another fresh container from which it should be used. Never add left out chemicals or reagents to a bottle. Some reagents require special condition for preservation such as dark bottles for light sensitive chemicals or low temperature for solvents and reagents. Deteriorated or outdated reagents and solutions should not be used. Follow customary protocols for dry chemical usage. Now let's try to understand the GLP for cleaning of glasswares. Cleanliness of volumetric glassware is very important ca calibration point of view. Only clean glass surfaces will support a uniform film of liquid. The presence of dirt or oil will tend to cause breaks in the film. Soaking in warm detergent is usually sufficient to remove the grease and dirt responsible for causing the water breaks. Where detergent is not effective, rinse glassware with clean mixture made by H2SO4 and sodium dichromate. To remove inorganic matter, rinse with other concentrated acids. Distilled water. To follow GLP and to get reproducible results, it is important to use distilled water in all experiments. In case of analysis for micro level contaminants, better double distilled water is required. Distilled water is classified on the basis of its electrical conductivity. Ion exchange columns and double distillations, all glass water stills are used to obtain different types of distilled water. In the case of ion exchange columns, a record should be kept of the volume of the product, water and EC value. The resin should be regenerated as per the supplier's instructions. How to measure the mass or weighing? Measuring accurate mass of a substance is a vital requirement for analysis. In the laboratory, the mass is determined by comparing the weight of an object with the weight of a standard mass is using different types of balance. Because acceleration due to a gravity affect both the known and unknown to the same extent. Equality of the weight shows equality of mass. The most commonly used analytical balance to determine the weight is within an accuracy of 0.1 mg. It is of vital importance that balance should be maintained with a great care. To avoid damage and error, follow the following rules. Balance should be kept in a clean condition after use. Protect the balance from corrosion, reactive glass. Keep balance on a flat platform. Heated objects should be brought to room temperature and then can be measured. 
use spatula or other things to take out the chemicals from water. Once the use of balance is over, make it relax by removing all weight from it. Now let's try to understand about the recording. Recording of each and every minute thing is important as well as critical. It is advisable to follow SOP for all, all instruments. SOP should include objectives, procedures, details of the methods, description of, description of test systems. Also it is advisable to keep record of all details including source of specimen, date of collections, conditions of the specimen storage, description of the transformation and calculation, name and address of the laboratory and all important information. The laboratory must establish and maintain the procedures for identification, collection, indexing, access storage, maintenance and disposal of quality documentation and technical records. How to maintain the equipment? Laboratory requires equipment ranging from a simple routine to more sophisticated instruments for various purposes including design, calibration, maintenance and validation. Analytical equipment such as spectrophotometer, chromatographic units and electrophoresis units needs to be computerized for instrument control, data collection and evaluation, printing, archiving and retrieval. For proper maintenance and care of equipments, logbooks should be maintained where details of their use, maintenance schedule, breakdowns and repairs, accessories, supply of consumable etc. are carefully recorded. Such a record will help in properly maintaining the instrument and planning for future. Equipment records should be maintained as long as the data generated by the equipment like name of the equipment and the manufacturer, model or type for identification, serial numbers, equipments was used, one or new, details of the order made for compliance, calibration test, standard specification, copy of manufacturing, manufacturer's operating instructions as well as SOPs. Details of the maintenance carried out, history of any damage, malfunction, modification or repair. Then comes the sampling. All laboratories interact with the field staff that carry out sampling, conduct site analysis and transport samples. The staff of the chemical laboratory must advise the field staff regarding procedures for site analysis and method of sample collection. The laboratory staff should also specify preservation technique of the samples for different analysis to be carried out in the laboratory and supply reagents required for preservation. The laboratory staff should make it a practice to periodically visit the sampling sites, observe the procedures being carried out and advise the nece as necessary. Proper sampling is procedures are important first step in ensuring monitoring results the following criteria should be met which is important for sample collection. Sample collected should be recorded in, a, in the seat correctly. Vessels or containers selected for sample collection should be clean and good and of good quality. The number of samples taken should be more in number, properly sealed and tagged. Location of samples should be carefully selected so that it can be reliable for the analysis. Samples should be immediately processed for analysis if not then should be preserved appropriately which met international standards. Documentation should be maintained minutely. When analysis is subcontracted to other laboratories, copies of the documents should be maintained with the principal laboratories to ensure that all monitoring results are fully traceable. Groundwater sampling needs special training should confirm it is only undertaken by appropriately qualified and trained staff in accordance with the known standards. Now let's try to understand the laboratory safety. All laboratory staff must follow the strict basic safety rules to protect themselves and the staff. Study the position and operation of the safety measures like emergency shower, fire blanket and fire extinguishers is an important. I should be protected by wearing glasses. Hand gloves must be used during handling all chemicals. Accidentally, if you come in contact with the chemicals, was the affected area with plenty of water. Avoid working alone in a laboratory if the process to be conducted are risky. Do not drink, eat or smoke in the laboratory. Do not use laboratory glassware for eating or drinking purpose. Do not store food items in refrigerators that are used for laboratory operations. 
always use a bulb or suction tube to draw chemicals in a pipette. Be careful in touching the objects that have been heated. Always fire polish the ends of the newly cut glass. Use fume hoods for toxic or noxious gases. Use care in testing for orders for correct records. Always discard harmful substance properly. Now let's try to understand the analytical quality control. Analytical quality control refers to all those processes and procedures designed to confirm that the results of the laboratory analysis are consistent, comparable and accurate and within the limits of the precision. In short, it is an internal mechanism to evaluate laboratory performance. It helps to identify and reduce human errors in routine laboratory practices. It is strongly recommended that laboratories should conduct such program routinely. These are the references. Thank you very much.